so Dante, a lot of the guys you're dealing with now weren't even here for the bowl game. So just getting them up to speed, what do you think? That's been the biggest challenge. Uh, as we all know in, in our defense, there's a lot going on in that. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a challenge. It's been an exciting challenge. I'm really, really um, looking forward to seeing what these guys can show you all. I've seen it, obviously, myself, but I'm looking forward to them to, to be able to put on a show for you all and the rest of the world and, and eliminate some of the, the worries that we have. Because um, there are some, obviously. It's a very inexperienced group, uh, but it's a very talented group. It's a very long, fast, physical. Uh, you all have been at practice, and it just looks different out there with that group. And that's nothing against the guys before, but that, it just is the way it is. Those guys all are – are six foot plus and, and can run and jump and are none of them afraid to, to put their face on you. Now, I have to do a great job of teaching some of these guys how to do that the correct way so they can stay in the game and they can't hurt our team. Uh, but it's an exciting group. It really is. you got more corners that can play man coverage. How does that help your safeties? I don't know if it helps our safeties. I just think it helps our defense. Okay. Um, you know, because our safeties are going to have to play man coverage also, which we have a bunch that can do that. Um, which is something we haven't been a part of really. I mean, it's just like we talked about before. You don't do make guys do things they're not good at, and, and this group can do that. So we'll be able to play a little bit more now. Am I sitting there saying that's who we're going to be? Right. No, I'm not saying that, but it could be who we are because we have the ability to do that. But it's nice to have guys to wear out wide at corner, as you asked, that can go out there and hold their own and, and let us play a true post safety and be over top of everything and not have to try to cheat to one side or do different things. Um, so that does help, but I think it more helps our, our defense and allows us to do that. Does that give uh, offenses more things to have to worry about and prepare for with your defense than maybe defense that play mostly zone? Yeah, it, it really does. Now, now they, we make things look right. certain ways on purpose. Right. Um, and, and the last couple of years, we've predominantly been a, a zone team. Now, quarters can look like man at times with the routes that you get, but – We've been a zone team, so it will help us to be able to have those other options to be able to play and do some one-high stuff. Uh, and it's not always a split safety because you can get yourself in trouble playing split safety a lot. So, like in the past, even if you uh, gave the look of playing man, the offenses knew they were all – They're going to spin out of there. Exactly. They, they knew that it was just Four a facade and, and right. get to where they're going to go. Now you can actually do it. We can actually go out there and do it now. Now our, our – my biggest struggle right now is getting them to – make it look like zone and actually go play man. You know, they, they see man and they want to run down there and just tell everybody in the country what we're in. Hey, guys, the, our jobs become much harder when they know what you're in. Right. So we've got to do a good job of being able to hold shells and do different things. Yeah. Transfers who have played a lot of football at a different school, maybe even different level, what advantage is that over a younger guy? Uh in case of our guy, I, I can only speak for the guys in my room who are there, um, which is Jasir and um, Marcus. Sorry, I was having a brain fart there. Jasir and Marcus. Um, it really, really helps those guys, especially like Jasir. Like, you don't worry about him going into the backyard brawl and the moment being too big for him because he's played national title games. Now, is that at Power 5 level? No, but a national title game is a big deal no matter what level, and you have all the eyes on you. And, and – so that helps in that aspect. And then it also helps, like I talked last year, is those two guys have seen almost everything that offenses can throw at you. Uh, you know, because when you play, especially you play smaller ball, you get a whole bunch more junk from offenses. So they've seen a lot of things. So they can, they can adjust on the fly and be, to be able to help other guys get ahead of things. Um, that, that's, again, just from my room. I, I can't speak on how it helps with the other guys, but that's how it pertains to me. When you go to some of your specialty packages, like six DBs, things like that, is that extra guy, it, can he come from your room, or does it necessarily better that that person's a corner or a free or someone, or are there guys that you have that you feel like could fill that role? Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch in my room, and I'm not trying to do – there's one person, two people really in my room that I'm trying to teach multiple positions just because we're so youthful, um, and, and that's Jasir and that's Aubrey. Because that Jasir, as I just talked a minute ago, has seen a lot of football and has played a lot of positions. So Jasir can go from Spear to go play Will in our sub packages, and now we've become even faster. Um, we're going to grab some people from positions that you wouldn't think about, and I'm not going to talk about it, but that you wouldn't think about that gives us some length and some speed that we haven't had in those positions, but it's coming from another room in our sub package. 
um, which is exciting. And now you've got you've got Dagon Davis out to the field at the spear. You've got both your cat and your free on the field. And now you've got Jasir over at will. And we pull that other piece in, and now he's roaming in the middle of the field. Our defense now becomes really long and really athletic. And you, we talk about getting our best 11 on the field. Well, now we get an opportunity to do that instead of just saying, hey, it's got to come from the safety room. It's got to come from the spear room. No, let's get our best football players on the field. And now we can tink with that, tinker with that. Jazeer played mainly outside linebacker yeah. at North Dakota State. So his transition to a hybrid safety, well, how's that been? Has it been he difficult? He has not transitioned to a hybrid safety. He's <laughs> playing outside linebacker. Okay. That's what our spears are. Mm -hmm. They really are. Now, we, we like them to be DB-ish, which is he is that. We, you can look at him and tell he's just a nickel. And now it's a seamless transition when he goes over and plays Will because that's all that is for us. And it's not like a normal Will linebacker where he's got to be in that box, which Jasir can do. And we ask him to do at times. But he's just playing nickel at all times, basically, on both sides. So it's been a very easy transition for him. You know, today's game, um, the safeties, not only do they have to play defense, but they make up your special teams. And so do outside linebackers. So you have to have a bunch of guys – that are capable of being versatile and be able to play a lot. I mean, that's just the way the game is today, isn't it? Yes, sir. Every single person in my room is going to have to play on special teams. Everyone. Because we, we've gotten to the past where we played so few of guys that our starters had to play on every single one of them. Maybe because some guys weren't ready or, or they just didn't have the skill sets at that point. Um, but now we've got – I've got 14 guys in my room. They, now, all 14 aren't going to play. Some of those guys are new walk-ons. But the majority of them, 10 out of them, got to play. And they got to help us and contr truly contribute on special teams. We, I got a young man in my group, my Keaton Thomas, that nobody here knows about. But he's going to help us on special teams. He's a true walk-on freshman from uh, Florida. From Florida, And he is a big, strong, fast, physical guy that is – like Coach just announced that he was going to travel to Pitt because he's done a great job both on the show teams, the scout teams on special teams, and then when he's got his opportunity in competition drills. So all of my guys have to. It's a very – Keaton Thomas, yes. Yep. He's been a very nice surprise for us. Uh, Neil mentioned the battle behind Marcus at uh, Cat. Yeah. Uh, who's competing there, and what is that like? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a really good question. Uh, I, I've got a couple guys that can do it. You know, my first thought, if, if something happened to Marcus, I'd move Aubrey over. Because Aubrey, like I, I gave Aubrey a test the other day. It was a 10-question test. And I, I asked him, everybody in the room, I said, you got 10 minutes to finish this. You put in your position and anything that you think needs to be talked about on that page. Well, Aubrey Burks went in there, and he put in all seven back end guys. Both corners, both safeties, the spear and Mike and the wheel and got every single one of them right in six minutes. Like, the young man is extremely intelligent. Um, so I would, I would probably move him over there first. But then we've got, you know, Malachi Ruffin. We've got Caleb Coleman. We've got some other guys. We, we could tinker with pulling a corner in there and do that if we had to. Um, but those are probably the guys right now that, that would play over there behind him. So if you move him, does that mean you're comfortable with Hershey? I am. Uh -huh. Yeah, free? I am. I'm going to start playing Marcus a little bit at free this week just to – Get him a feel. You you want guys that can dual train, and he's he's very solid at, at cat. Now I can try to steal some and see if I, see if he can do the free safety as well. Um, but I do feel hurt good with Hershey now. Hershey's got to clean some things up, and he knows that. But man, if you could draw one, that's what you want. To, that's what you want. That's the way they look. Like we sit here and Coach Coach Coons is salivating at the mouth because he he wants him to come play backer one day, and I'm saying no. He's a safety because he runs so well, and he's just. I mean, he's got. I, I make fun of him, pterodactyl arms. I mean, he's so long that he can get beat and still have the opportunity to make a play on the ball because of his length. Um, but I am. I'm very comfortable with Hershey. Um, and he's going to continue to get better because the more football and the more reps that he plays because he hasn't played a ton of it. You know, he was a high school quarterback and blew his knee out. Um, and that's why he didn't get highly recruited. And I'm still not sure how we got him, just with physical talents. Uh, but he's going to be a really, really good football player for us. I'm just curious, why, why so eager to move away from zone? I'm not. No, okay. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Man, right? No, it, if you have the ability to play man, it, it really makes life easier. Like, you don't have to make all the adjustments. And 
you know, all the communication doesn't happen. Now, when it gets in your condensed desk and stuff like that, it, it, you got to make adjustments. But if you have the ability to have guys that can just line up and, and lock people down, that, that makes your life as a coordinator, as a play caller, a lot easier because you can do a whole bunch of stuff in that box and know that, hey, all I got to make sure is the quarterback and the running back are taken care of. And now you get your patterns and all the different things you want to come up with. You know, you got a, a open toolbox now. Um, but I am I don't think that we are as a staff just hoping to go and play a bunch of man. We just have the ability to. That's what I wanted. I guess coming in, it sounds like the front would help out. Yeah. And then Jerkoff. Looking at the way you played, like the first round, you were able to like turn four and be able to wave out and then come out and then take it to that fifth. Yes. Same thing. Very Uh, you asking my personal opinion? Personal. My personal opinion, I'd rather play zone. Yeah. Because when you play man, and, and yeah, it's great. You can get everybody covered out there. But now you got to worry about quarterback scrambles and you got to worry about light boxes in terms of the run game and stuff like that. You know, you play man and they run the football. Well, if somebody messes up, there ain't really anybody besides that post safety who's at 20-plus yards that can get it on the ground. When you play zone and you have eyes back, you can actually correct mistakes that happen up front. Process on the field Come for again. teaching guys. Yes, said you mentioned education process on the field for your defense. The education process to get guys into special teams roles is that something you've got to do, especially with high school players, to impress on them the importance of it. Yes, and we do. This is the best place I've ever been in terms of special teams and the importance of it. Coach Brown, he, he I know he talks about it to you all, but it ain't just talk. It is everything that we do. I mean, heck, we spent an hour last night watching special teams as a full staff last night just to make sure everybody's on the same page. And if you you may not be coaching special teams, but you got guys that are going to be on special teams. So we lead with special teams in our, our position meetings because it is an importance. But we want to be so – we talk about game changers on special teams. So we, we put so much time into it, and there's so many techniques that are transferable to offense and defense. Like we talk about dip and drive. Well, you can talk about that with a D lineman. You can talk about that with a wide out. Talking about press release and he's got to dip and drive and reduce his surface area. Like there's so many transferable skill sets there. That's why we put so much into it. Um, but it is, it is a teaching process of learning how to do, use those techniques and learning where you're supposed to be and how it all fits because all special, special teams are the same as offense and defense. There's 11 pieces out there and they all got a spot they got to fit into. And, and Figuring those things out and teaching those guys those positions is a challenge. And they've done a great job of learning it right now. And I think we're going to be all excited about what we put out there. You mentioned uh, Spear. And um, think of a guy like Malinger. And um, he's kind of a throwback player. Um, and, and you're laughing. But is there, this is a crazy question. But you almost have to dial him back sometimes because he is so aggressive. And he will hit anything that moves. Not almost. You have to dial him back all the time, okay. <laughs> all the time. And that's one of the things I was talking about earlier is having to teach him how to play football, defensive football, because you remember, he's a wide out now. So he's all go, 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 go. Well, on defense, you go, 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 go. Oh, crap, some, I've just missed a tackle. And teaching him how to be inside out and be, getting in a great body position. Um, so those are, those are the woe part of it. It's not woe as in don't be so physical. It's – keep my head up and keep my – so I'm not getting targeting penalties or I'm not getting a concussion to hurt myself, um, those kind of things. Well, I was going to say, in the 90s, he's in the game. Oh. Today, th that may not work. When you could go back and, and say, go in there and rip his head off and, and that yeah. was okay, he, he would fit that mold to right. a T. But that's not today's world. And, and that's probably one of the biggest things I'm trying to teach him and get him adjusted to is I have to be in a great body position because – a lot of bad things can happen if I'm not. And it, it's been a challenge, but he's really, really coming into it and understanding it. Um, a lot of the, the understanding comes from mistakes, if doing it wrong. And Like in the scrimmage the other night, he missed a tackle. And you would think he would make that tackle all the time, but his body position, he couldn't handle it. And he's got a 240-pound back running downhill at him, and he misses the tackle. But he'll learn from those mistakes now so that he can make them when it comes to game time. I guess the key with him is channel the aggression, but don't lose the aggression. Yes. Understand, control your body. Body control for him is the number one thing. You don't worry about him playing man coverage or any of our zone stuff. It is controlling your body so that you can make the plays that it need to, that come to you. 
What's the Who? key for you? For, Say it again. Well, I said one more on man to man, if you don't mind. Just what's the key for you? Teaching, I don't know, worrying, reminding people just relative to the, the guys that you coach to play that type of defense. What's the key for me? Yeah, like the one my... thing that you're most attuned to, you're, you're constantly telling guys about it. Maybe you're just constantly thinking to yourself about My Mine is, uh, we talk about it a ton, sense of urgency. And, and I'll break that down, what I mean by that. It is a sense of urgency to get a call from the defense, from Coach Leslie. And then a sense of urgency to get lined up. Because it, it, with a young group, if they don't get lined up fast, they are never going to see what the offense is telling them. And – our teams we face anyways are always going to motion and shift and do things because they can't figure out what we're in. So if you 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 put that with the fact that we have a young group, you got to imagine we're going to get a ton more of it because that's going to be the issue with a young group is seeing motions and where do I go to next. So that sense of urgency has to be extremely heightened so that I can get lined up and now I can look at that offense and say, well, Okay, that guy over there is staring back at the quarterback. He's about to go in motion. What do I have to adjust this to ahead of time? Because the game becomes really, really hard when all I'm thinking about is playing slot, maybe. Okay, And then that motion comes, oh, crap, what do I have to get to next? So trying to get them ahead of schedule so that they can see things and we don't have those big mistakes where we're giving up touchdowns, you know? Other young safeties in your room, what, what have you seen from – Whomever. I mean, Caleb Coleman has to help us on special teams. I don't know if he'll help us a ton on defense this year, but you never know. We know how this world works and the injuries and things like that. But he's one that's going to be a really good football player. I know I talked about that last year, but he's still in the developmental stage, and he understands that, and he's working his butt off. So he'll help us on special teams. Uh, Christian Stokes has been really, really a bright spot on special teams for us. Um, the last couple weeks, you know, he, he had the knee injury he was coming off of, so he missed all of spring. Missed all of the summer, basically. Um, so he's not mentally ready to go on defense. Has he shown us that he can play at this level? Yes. But the game is just too fast for him right now in terms of defense. But he's really done a good job on special. Like Coach uh, Brown called him out in the special teams meeting of, hey, we're noticing you. Now you've got to continue to do that and keep earning that trust so that we can actually put you out there. But he has a great skill set. Um, let's see some other guys. Um, Riley Collins is going to be a really – I haven't talked about him yet. Riley Collins is going to be a really, really good football player. I know we signed him as a wheel backer here, but he's playing spear right now because he's, his, his weight isn't where it needs to be. And he's got the skill set to be able to play spear. And I hope I don't lose him one day. I probably will. But I hope I don't because he's been a really, really bright spot for us in terms of a young guy that the future is going to be really, really good for him. Um, Naeem Muhammad isn't as young, but he's a guy that's going to be a, a tremendous special teams player for us. And he'll be able to get you out of games and do some things at the spear position um, if you need him to. But he's a guy that's got to help us. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anybody. Ruffin, we all know about Malachi. He's a special team staple, but he'll be able to play both cat and free for us. Um, and then Hershey will be on all the special teams. Um, that's about all the young guys. Jalen Shelton, yours? Or he, he's moved to corner. Mm -hmm. He's moved to corner, which is just his natural position. We tried to move him to cat safety because we wanted to see if he could take over that role for us. But it's just, as you know, it's just a lot. And he needs to go back and play corner, and that's what we're going to do, and let him just use his skill set to where he's comfortable. If we need to move him back next year or something, we may. But right now, he's going to play corner for us. Good. Appreciate you guys.